I have a friend who does a lot of uh, volunteer work for fire departments, police departments, uh, things like that. And he's always uh, asking me for my help and wrangling me in. So I thought I'd just videotape this project that he's asked me to work on, which is he's got a long table that he's building for a fire department uh, kitchen. And he wants a cribbage board put in it. So that's about what I'm getting ready to do. So there's the uh, table that he's glued up. Looks to me like he used some kind of uh, leftover flooring that got volunteered or something. It's got a bit of a bow in it, which makes it kind of tough. But uh, trying to compensate for that bow a little bit with the CNC, uh, the cribbage board is supposed to go right in the center. You can see I've marked the center. And so when I set up the file, I'll set it up so that that is... Uh, the center point of the of the cribbage board and I'll just design it from there and he said to make it about just normal size the width of this uh, the width of this board right here a little bit more and then um, he'll uh, take it from there so all I have to do is put the cribbage board in there and I'm getting ready to resize one of my patterns to go ahead and put that in there and then CNC that in there, and we'll watch that process as we progress. Okay, at this time we're getting ready to move into the software design part of the video. I had previously done a video on uh, making a cribbage board in collaboration with Laguna Tools, and I'll go ahead and put a link to that in the description of this video. In that video, I was focused on making an individual cribbage board, and I spent quite a bit of time talking about the resizing tool after version 11 in the Vectric B-Carve Pro changes. I will still discuss that in this video, but the focus will be um, multi-purpose in this video for the volunteer work that I did, and I'll be covering the following things in the video today. First, I'll be covering how you would put a larger board then your CNC bed onto your bed and locate uh, the bit in a way that allows you to carve something on that board without worrying about even using the tiling feature. The next thing I'll do is I'll talk about how you import a cribbage board vector SVG file in this case and you can get that easily by either contacting Laguna or contacting me and I can give that to you. I'm willing to give that cribbage board SVG file out to those that are interested in it. And then we're going to talk about after we've imported it, how we make it the right size, which is the primary thing you might be able to learn from this by using the resizing tools, both as a group and as individual vectors. So you can make that cribbage board any size you want. I have three sixteenths inch holes in my file but it could easily be modified to be 1 8 inch peg holes for those that like the smaller holes. Apparently the fire department people really like the uh, 3 16 inch pegs according to Mike, so that's what we always put in. And then the last thing we'll cover in this video is how to actually set up the tool pass using the layer function so that it cuts everything on a specific layer and how that makes your life much easier when setting up tool pass. So with that, let's go ahead and move into the software part of this tutorial. Okay, we're going to start this project by creating a new file. And that new file, I'm going to make it 15 inches by 78 inches. As far as uh, going through, I'm going to put down a 5 eighths, although that doesn't really matter much because I'm going to go off the material surface. My XY datum point is going to be in the center because I'm going to carve it in the center of the board. And this doesn't really matter because I'm not going to actually uh, go completely through. Well, I guess I am with the drill holes. I need to go completely through, so I'll have to go measure that again in a second because I didn't really measure it. And we'll move from there. So I just uh, took a brief moment and I went ahead and measured it. And let's go back and fix that. That is 0.75 inches. 0.745 inches actually. Hit OK. And I'm going to zero off the machine bed since the material is warped slightly. I want to make sure 
that uh, when I'm carving the material that it doesn't just go messing up my spoiler board but does get all the way through it okay. Now I need to import a file from uh, my set of cribbage templates and alright I'm going to go ahead and import a format that I actually use for a cribbage board I did in collaboration with Laguna Tools. So the, the SVG came in here at this level and I want to go ahead and uh, center this. So I want to group it first so that everything doesn't collapse upon itself. That takes a little bit of thing because there's a lot of uh, holes. Alright now that I have this grouped my next step is to center this. So I'm going to go over to the alignment. I'm going to center it in the center of the project and that's actually where I'm going to um, carve from. You saw that I marked the center in uh, earlier in the video physically on the table. Hit close. I want to see how big this is. I can't recall. So let's take a look at the size. So this is 5.83 wide at each edge by 27 inches tall. And the board itself, if I want to fit it within that board, would be right at um, 5 inches, I believe. So I'm going to go take a measurement real quick, and I'll be right back to validate. I just took a quick measurement, and the uh, center board of the three boards that are glued up is 4 and 15 16 inches. So 4 and 15 16 inches means that this being 5.83, some of the holes will be right along the seam of that board. Um, I'm going to take a look at this and see what it looks like if I reduce it so that this is right 4 and 15 16 or 4 and 3 quarters wide. I want to see what impact it has. So I'm going to go ahead and resize this cribbage board to be 4.75 inches. Hit apply. Now that's going to shrink the whole board. Hit close. And we're going to recenter that to make sure it's centered. And then the cribbage board will fit right inside the board. And I don't have to worry about the other two boards bowing or cracking. And it will be as level as possible when I'm carving the board. So that's the way I'm going to approach this. The next thing I have to do, hit close is actually ungroup this board now. I want to ungroup it because I need to change the size of the actual holes so that they're the actual size I need. Uh, when I shrunk it, that means the holes are going to shrink. I'll demonstrate that when this uh, finishes ungrouping. Alright, we can see that everything's ungrouped. I'm going to deselect off of it. This SVG is set up so that each of the various elements are on a separate layer. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of a couple of these that don't add any value. These don't have any data on them. And I'm going to turn off the grid and the text and now I just have the holes. And if we look at the size of a hole at the resize tool, you see it's supposed to be 0.1875 to be a 3 16 inch peg hole for these boards. And they're at 0.1528. So now what I need to do is I need to go ahead and change all of these to the correct size. So I'm going to select, select all of the holes. I'm going to come over to scale items individually. That's an important part. The anchor is in the center of each of the holes, and I'm going to change this to 0.1875, which is 3 16 or I could do 3 divided by 16 equal, link x, y, they're circles, so both the x and the y radius should change. I've applied that. Hit close, and now our board if we look at it in all of its glory, all of the key pieces are in here that need to be in. So now it's time to set up the tool pass. 
what I like to do is I will go ahead and do the holes first. That's the longest leg. And so I come over to the tool path. Let's just, I guess, go this way. Come over to the tool path. I'm using a, prec a pecking drill path. And I'm going to go through a Z amount. I've got my 3 16 inch core drill bit selected. And we're going to use peck drilling. And I'm going to go ahead and the peck depth is driven by how uh, deep the built drill bit is. And I found that this can actually get through all the way. So I'm going to put that at point seven six, which is just a little below. Hit OK. And so we're going to dwell at the bottom of each drill pass. We don't need to do that because I'm going all the way through the board. And then we're going to call that holes. Hit calculate. Oops. I forgot to select the right vector. So I want all closed vectors associate with toolpath holes. Hit close. Now I want to calculate. And all the holes should be calculated. Let's do a preview of the visible toolpath. As you can see, we put holes throughout the whole board. Hit close. So now that we have the holes drilled, the next step is to set up the drill path or the tool path for the grids. So let me, the grids are turned on, so that's good. I'm going to come over here and select a profile tool path because I like to just let the grids be one line. Make sure that I've got the right bit selected, which is a 60 degree V bit. I have that 60 degree V bit. It's got a pass depth of 0.1. Three flutes, 20,000 RPM, hit select. It was already selected from before. I have a pass depth of 0.05, which I'll try at first. I think that's usually pretty good. I'm, gonna, I'm going to be right on the actual grid lines instead of outside or inside. I don't need a separate last pass. I don't need to add tabs. I really don't need... A ramp it will go in just fine but I will go ahead and put a ramp in of let's say a half inch and um, I'm going to select all closed vectors associated with it and all open vectors actually they're all open so uh, I'll cover both bases no holes we're going to do the grid I'm going to hit close and I'm going to put here grid. Calculate. And let's preview that tool path. And as you can see, that's what that looks like. Let me give it just a little bit of color to make it easier to see. We'll make the holes red for kicks hit close so now we have the grid and the holes and the next one that we want is the text so we want a v-carve tool path for the text we want a start depth of zero a flat depth of 0 0.05 which, which is what I did uh, for the actual profile cut I'm going to use the same V bit. I'm going to put text. Don't need any clearance tools. Selector. All closed vectors associated with toolpath. Text. Close. Calculate. And let's make that color blue. And let's preview the visible toolpath for that toolpath. All right, so there's our board uh, ready to be carved inside of the table. 
At this point, we'll transfer everything to a USB drive and go over to start the cut on the actual table. For this project on this board, since it's already been manufactured by somebody else and they just want me to carve right in the middle, there's a couple things I'm going to do. And I'll go through those here in a second. The first thing I'm going to do is reset my XYZ0 or my XY0 to that point that I drew on the board earlier, which is right at the center point of the board. The bits I'll be using for this are two bits. One is a drill bit. It's a core drilling bit specialized for drilling holes, which makes it a nice and fast evolution compared to using an end mill. This is actually built with a brad point. And then the other one is a 60 degree V-bit uh, is what I'm using for the grid lines and for the actual um, text. The next step is to actually zero this in the center. So I'm going to come out here. My zero location is right here. And I want to get close to it so I make sure I am aligned with it. And I've got a nice thin 1 8 inch bit right at the moment so that will work pretty good. doesn't have to be... Totally within a millimeter is just fine. And the next thing I'm going to do is change the bit. Come up. And the first bit I'm going to use is the core drill bit. So I'm going to change that bit at this time and then I'll zero that out on the bed. Come out to the bed. Get away from that clamp. Turn the machine on. It's 3 a.m. You got me waiting for your love. I'm at the corner of the club. It's pouring down, but I won't. No, I won't budge. I call your bluff. You think you're tough, yeah. So go ahead, come and pick me up. Bring all your friends so they can watch You're drunk dialing up the phone So here I am at 3 a.m. You got me looking crazy, baby These wicked little games you play, yeah. So step up to the plate, don't wait It's 3 a.m. So here I am, oh You're crazy
done I guess we'll talk when morning comes Just chill and keep it cool for us, yeah Hey, that's a cue for entry I know those eyes, let's act surprise, yeah Crazy. 
Overall, I'm pretty happy with how the uh, table turned out. It uh, located right in the center just like I wanted it to. And so I'm pretty happy. Uh, I've since, since I've made this video, I've uh, talked with Mike and he's really happy with how it turned out. And so it was worth the adventure, so to speak. Let's do a review real quickly of the things that we learned in this video. Um, the first thing we learned was how to locate that 7 foot 15 inch wide table on a 3 foot CNC. And basically we didn't have to use a tile feature because all we had to do was uh, move the, the table. I put a little stand to help support it at the right location on the board because the cribbage board was only um, about 28 inches long or so. So I was able just to locate it so that uh, area where I was going to carve in the cribbage board was actually centered to the CNC bed. And uh, my bed is two feet by three feet, so it fit right in that area. And then we used the uh, center XY0 versus a corner XY0 to make sure that we put it exactly where we wanted it to by marking the table first and then zeroing off the mark in the table and then we knew everything would be centered. We also were able to make the size just right so that it fit right on that flat board so we had the best chance for carving and the results without having to go across some seams that uh, boards might have been a little warped on. And since we were only going down about 0 0.05 inches with the text and with the grid, that was uh, uh, important to be as flat as possible. The next thing that we actually covered was how to import the cribbage board SVG. That's a pretty straightforward process if you've ever imported an SVG, but we went through that process and then actually resizing that SVG both first as a group to fit within that actual board. So we wanted to fit right in the center board and then resizing the individual holes so that uh, the pegs that we wanted to use would fit properly, which were 3 16 inch pegs. Um, you can resize them to 1 8 inch if you like. And then we uh, discussed the setting up the tool paths and layers to make it easy to get everything you want in a specific tool path. And then also uh, how to control the pecking depth, which is really controlled by the tool you select pass depth. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you like, share, comment, and if you like what you're learning, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, wishing you the very best.